If your training partners are the type of mindless gym bros who turn everything into a failure contest, they're always touching the weight, one more, one more, you got it, all you, all that type of stuff, tell them to kick rocks. Seriously. Okay, the only thing hitting failure here is our bromance. I'd rather be freaky than friendly. So beat it. Chest up. Shoulders back. Welcome to Revival Fitness, everybody. And today we have essentially a follow-up video to the recent one I made, the top five bodybuilding myths. And we're going to specifically focus in this video on failure, which is what you felt like before you started lifting. So I kind of touched on failure briefly in that recent video, but I wanted to make another one to kind of specify the two types of failure and kind of break down in more detail when at least I believe it is optimal to train to failure, when it's safe to, if it's even necessary in many cases, all of those things. So we're going to break that down in this video today. And you have to understand one thing about training to failure, guys. There is fundamentally two forms of failure you can hit in the gym, technical, and absolute. So we're going to start with absolute failure because that's what I had in mind, but I didn't really clarify that well in the previous video. This is when you quite literally cannot perform another repetition of the exercise you're doing, even if you manage to cheat on your form. Essentially, there is no way that you're going to complete another rep in any fashion unless maybe a spotter comes over and helps you do it. And examples of absolute failure are always going viral on social media. They're pretty basic, right? Getting pinned under a squat, or in some cases letting it roll off of you like this dumbass, being unable to finish a bench press and it collapses down on you, or something like cat backing a deadlift and dropping it to the floor whenever you try to pull that last rep. Now, obviously the big three power lifts are not the only ones that can be taken to absolute failure, but I picked these examples for a reason. Lifts like these, right? Heavy multi-joint compound exercises, a lot of the times, especially with barbells, these are the exercises that you do not want to be taking to absolute failure. And there are two big reasons for this. The first of which being increased injury risk. As we've seen in a lot of my recent shorts, guys, especially if you do not have access to safety arms or pipes or a spotter, and even then those backup plans can be faulty in their own right, you do not want to fail these exercises. And the king of scary failure when you hit absolute failure, of course, is the bench press. So let's assume for the sake of argument that you fail a bench press absolutely, it drops onto you, let's assume that you survive it. If you do so without the spotter or safety arms, you essentially got out of this in one of two ways. The first is that you did not have clips on the bar and you managed to dump the weight off of either side. And this is also risky too, if not for you, because you could potentially really strain a pec or something in the arm if you're tilting the bar to one side if you're really fatigued. You also could hit an innocent bystander, crush your pet, something like that. So I'm not a huge fan of the dumping the weight method on the bench press, guys, but I guess it's better than nothing, assuming you don't hurt or maim somebody else. Or you could do the roll of shame, and that also brings its own risk too, because you could potentially bruise a rib, pull a muscle in the stomach or the abdomen, hurt your low back getting it up. So no matter how you look at it, guys, you don't want to be taking a bench press to absolute failure. And deadlifts have the easiest failure path per se because the bar can just fall onto the ground. But even so, deadlifts are very taxing, especially on the low back, especially the stronger you are. So these are not something you want to be pushing to the absolute limit over and over. And then the second one, let's assume you never even get injured doing absolute failure, which is a small chance. The second big issue is strength stagnation. If you follow any sort of power lifter or strength athlete online, you ever notice how their training footage is very boring? It's like 315 at three by three at eight RPE. That's not a coincidence, guys. They're doing that for a reason. Failing reps on your heaviest movements is a time-tested way to plateau endlessly. If you do this over and over on a weekly or even bi-weekly basis, you know the guy who comes in the gym every week, it's time to max out again, bro. 
you are really increasing the chances that you're going to have to deload and essentially, again, like we said, get injured more than you should need to. And also, too, your body adapts to what you do most, all right? So if you fail lifts over and over and over and you want to gain strength, you're teaching your body to fail. That is totally counterproductive, especially for strength athletes. And once again, even if you only care about bodybuilding and aesthetics, bra, it's still not optimal. And once again, too, training to failure is not automatically bad, okay? Pushing yourself to peak intensity is going to grow your muscles. It's going to force your body to adapt. But you have to do it tactfully and intelligently. And if you're a masochist like me who enjoys the pain of training, you want to push yourself to a high intensity every time you work out. So what is the happy medium? I believe it comes in the form of exercise selection. So like I said, I generally do not advocate taking multi-joint heavy barbell exercises or even dumbbells for a lot of cases to absolute failure. And by the way, this does include weighted dips too, because if you're doing heavy weighted dips and you fail, you're only going down and your shoulders are not going to thank you. And I also would not put heavy machines such as like the leg press or the hack squat in this category too. I don't think you want to be taking these to absolute failure, even if on a machine, because if you really fail and the weight falls down on you, you don't have the time to kind of get the hooks or the latches. That could also result in an injury. So anything that's really heavy comparatively to other exercises, guys, I would say in most cases, if not all, there's no need to take it to absolute failure. However, I don't see an issue with taking most machines or cable exercises to failure. And this can include the lat pull down, cable rows, hamstring curls, any sort of chest or shoulder press machine. And the same goes for single joint movements too. You know, the typical pump stuff, right? The lateral raise, the curls, the tricep extensions. I would also throw in things like abs and calves here, the stuff that you kind of tack on at the end of the workout. And you could even do push-ups here as well, even pull-ups, right? If you're stuck training at home, because if you do reach absolute failure on a push-up, you just go to the ground. If you do it on a pull-up, you just simply can't get up. And also for a lot of the things I just listed too, right? They're not axial loading exercises. They're not very fatiguing for the whole body. That also makes them applicable here. Should you take a sumo conventional Romanian or stiff-legged deadlift to absolute failure? I say no. But can you take exercises geared toward the individual muscles there to absolute failure? Maybe shrugs, hamstring curls, hyperextensions, things like that? I would say for the most part, sure. So that is how I work with, apply, and kind of categorize absolute failure. Now let's switch gears for a second and go into technical failure. I'm going to show some clips of me working out here, guys. Just note down what you see. So these clips illustrate technical failure. You're able to finish the set with clean, consistent form, but it's evidently a struggle and you could not do another rep without deviating from that form. Technical failure is essentially estimated one RIR depending on who you talk to if you use the reps and reserve scale. You push to the point where reps noticeably slow down and you finish the set whenever you sense that absolute failure is imminent. Right, so your arms might shake a bit, you might have to take a few deep breaths before that final rep, but your form fundamentally remains intact. So this means no hip thrusting on the bench press, no half squats, no cat backing the deadlifts, etc. Once you're an experienced lifter, you can start to reliably sense and gauge for yourself 
when you're about to cross over from the technical failure to the absolute failure threshold. In my estimation, very rarely should experienced lifters be missing this. Now for novices, it's more common, which we're gonna talk about in a second. Now, of course, it's bound to happen from time to time. You go for that one extra rep, you thought you had it, you didn't get it, whatever the case is. Maybe you underestimate a little bit, you leave an extra rep in the tank. That's bound to happen at some point. So for instance, if you regularly fail reps on your exercises whenever in your head you think you have one or two more, you're just not an experienced lifter or you never actually learned properly. This is a big issue that novices run into. They always think they have one or two more, but they end up failing the next rep. And if you had any experienced onlooker analyze the form, they could tell you that they're gonna fail the next rep. But the novice, because their kinesthetic awareness is not that high yet, they can't get this. And as I mentioned in the recent bodybuilding myth video, this gets really bad and exaggerated whenever you always train with a bunch of gym bros who wanna push you, oh, one or two more bro, one more, one more, and they're doing half the work for you. If that's the case for you, you're never gonna fully grasp this. Firmly grasp it! Mindless gym bros love nothing more than shouting, Oh you bro, one more, one more, all this stuff, despite obvious evidence to the contrary. As a result, these guys never really learn to gauge their own failure threshold. They never develop that kinesthetic awareness that's necessary to understand these things. And they never really get strong because they never finish reps or sets by themselves. Their friends always touch the bar, touch the arms, all this stuff. In other words, they never get truly strong. So if you want to avoid this fate of the general pack of gym bro commercial gym schmucks, I recommend taking most of your exercises to technical failure more often than not. Now, there is a case to be made for going to seven or eight RPE, a little bit lower on lower rep strength movements. And of course, too, if you're deloading or doing rehab from an injury, neither form of failure, absolute or technical, should be anywhere near the picture. For most lifters, though, I would say that technical failure is the most widely applicable, and then absolute can be used mainly for the machines you do, if they're not major big like leg machines, and then the isolation stuff at the end of the workout. So go ahead and eat your heart out when you do your lateral raises, okay? Grunt, spit, piss your pants, crap your pants, go ahead, have at it. But if you ask me, technical failure is superior because it lets you hit those upper threshold limits of intensity while ultimately limiting the injury risk. And one last note here, if your training partners are the type of mindless gym bros who turn everything into a failure contest, they're always touching the weight, one more, one more, you got it all, you all that type of stuff, tell them to kick rocks, seriously. Okay, the only thing hitting failure here is our bromance. I'd rather be freaky than friendly, so beat it. But this has been the video, guys. Thank you for watching. Be sure to join the channel membership and or the Patreon for direct Q&As with me. Like, comment, subscribe, and hit me up for coaching, all that other good stuff. Thank you for watching, and I will catch you next time.